Let's start from the beginning. If I were to enter this prompt, men in a suit, you'll often get varying results and quite honestly, unpleasing results for that matter. In some cases, there are deformities, double heads, double torsos, and as a result of this, most people think, man, this program sucks. Meanwhile, on the homepage of Playground AI, there are these beautiful images that so many of the members have made. So, what gives? How did they get to these final results? To start off, I think there are some basic things that you need to understand about how stable diffusion works. Even with this simple prompt, I'm going to show you something that will make a big difference in the outcome of the results that we previously got. You see, the coherency of the image is slightly better. The quality can use some more work, but more on that in a second. Don't worry about the cropped images. We'll also address this very soon. But notice, there are no double heads, some deformities in the faces and hands, and that's mostly because the AI needs more information. But you will see that there is a wide variance in the types of images we're getting. To understand what's happening here, there are some things that you need to consider. Stable Diffusion was trained on a massive database with dimensions of 512 by 512. Once you stray from those original aspect ratios, the likelihood of you getting deformities, double heads, or unpleasing results will increase. If we go back to the prompt that we entered, man in a suit is a very general term, so in turn, you are going to get a variation of results. So, the first thing to consider when developing a prompt is to be as specific as you can and be very descriptive. Building from a simple prompt is the best way to have the most control over the image you get. Utilizing adjectives to describe nouns is a great way to approach prompting. Also, knowing the fact that these data sets are images from stock sites or Google or similar places, many of these images have tags. So, ask yourself, the image that I want, what would it be tagged with? By building your prompt from scratch, you will start to develop templates for yourself to reuse and tweak and create even more amazing images. Now, how we can do this is very simple building your prompt from scratch, utilizing seeds, and negative prompts. To prove it to you, I'm going to take this not-so-flattering image and transform it into an amazing portrait. The first thing you want to do is utilize the same seed. Basically, a seed is a random number that is generated by stable diffusion. Utilizing the seed will keep certain characteristics of that image somewhat consistent. The next thing we want to do is identify things in your image that you don't want. Toggle on Exclude from Image. This is known as negative prompts. Reviewing the image, there are various things here we can put into the negative prompt. A cropped head. It looks more like an artistic painting rather than photorealistic. There are too many buttons, and it's an all-gray suit. Perhaps we want to change the color. Let's enter all those things that we don't want to see in the image. Now let's generate a new image, and now we see the image is slowly taking shape. The head is still cropped off, but don't worry about that. We will address it later. You can also fix cropped images in Canvas, but at least now it's looking a bit more photorealistic. Let's enter some negative prompts regarding the hands. It's not terrible. There is some potential there, but it's also not perfect. For now, we will enter these words into the negative prompt. Now let's start to shape the image. Often, what I like to do is ask myself questions. We have a man in a suit. What kind of suit? What color suit? Let's give him a prompt. A man in a black suit now. Wait for the result. And finally here, you can see we have a gentleman photo with a black suit and it looks very natural. Now what kind of suit is this? Let's give him a silk suit and wow. Here you can see the result. It generated as we wanted. And now we give another prompt like just we want to add tie here. So we give another prompt. Let's give him a red tie so we can design it better by adding more prompts. Now here you can see the man in a black silk suit with a red tie. Now it's a complete gentleman photo. Now make it more interesting. We add some background here so we add a prompt nature background with flowers and mountains. Now here you can see this outstanding view with a photo. It looks so incredible. So now let's add another prompt. We want to change the identity of this man like we want a Spanish man in a black suit. So now here you can see we got the result according to the given prompt. Now I want this man to drink a coffee and now here you can see the best result. A man in a black suit with a natural background and coffee hope. You will fall in love with this photo. Do you really want to drink coffee in such a good environment? Now let's talk about the fine details. Some very common words used in prompts for details are high details, intricate details, 
or even a word like ornate is a fancy way of saying, give me fancy details. At the start of the prompt, we add a highly detailed photo. Now you can see the result in more detail and the picture looks more realistic. Now we add another prompt here, a Spanish man with a lady. Now here you can see it looks fine. So in this way, you can add more prompts to make this image better. You can also make changes in this image by changing the prompt position. As you can see, we entered the word drinking a coffee here at the end. Now we see the results, so the prompt order matters. So what is the more priority? Enter at the start of your prompt. Notice we haven't added any more negative prompts yet. I discovered along the way, too many negative prompts can also negatively impact your image. So it's always best just to put in what's required. At this point, we have what I call a foundational prompt. We have a subject in an environment. The next step is to add what's known as modifiers whether they be artistic styles, certain details of the image, and once again, thinking adjectives to describe the noun. Now we look further at negative prompts. As you can see, we have already entered the prompt details here, so we want to remove something in this photo. Let's learn how we can do this, like here, I want to remove the lady. So I give the negative prompt here. Finally, you can see the result ladies removed, so you can also change the color, object, or anything. Don't want to see in the image. Now here, you can change the dimension of a photo and you can improve the prompt guidance and improve the image quality here, so let's try. And now here, you can see the image dimension and quality changed. So in this way, you can use these options to make changes. Now let's try to change the seed number and see better results. Like here, we have an image, seed, number 857914655, so we replace the last digit 5 with 6. And here you can see we get the different variation of the image by changing every number. You will get different results. Now we replace the digit 7 with 3 and here you can see we have a different result. So in this way you can generate more different images here. You can select how much image variations you need with a single prompt. So I select the number 4. Finally, you can see we have 4 different variations of the image. So in this way you can generate variations of the image according to your choice. Now try this one image to image, so put the image here and click on generate. Now see the result is more beautiful and realistic than the original photo. One of the advantages of using a seed versus image to image is that with a seed you can still tweak the person's pose. Every change you make will change the image, but you are not committed to one pose as you are with image to image. Here you can change image filters so we can use different filters to generate different images, like I select the watercolor and generate the image and see the images generated according to the filter. Now we choose another filter to generate the image. Simply now we try the cinematic filter and finally see the result of this image in a fully cinematic look. So it's not always about the right prompts and the right filters to use. Using the right negative prompts, adjusting your seeds accordingly will give you much better results than spamming multiple images at a time and practically gambling with AI, so to speak. Once you learn to develop a good basis of a foundation for images you want to create, this will open up so many possibilities and much more flexibility to get the results that you want. Until the next video, my friends, this is Playground AI.